This was my face throughout the episode when Jen kept saying she apologizes, but she's not sure what she's apologizing for. Hmm. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I'm covering Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Season 1, Episode 13, Chili Reception. You guys, this is a finale and it bums me out. I'm not ready to be done with this show. I am ready, however, for the reunion. I can't wait to talk about it. Stick with me on this one because in this recap, I already have a deep dive prepared that you're going to want to see. It involves Mary and how expensive, yeah, how expensive it is to look that stupid. Okay, let's get into this episode. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for... A dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island, like the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So check it out. Thanks so much. Okay, so we're coming off the roller coaster ride that was Las Vegas. And we start the episode out with, like, we'll see Whitney meditating with her crystals. We see Lisa at work, Heather in her kitchen. And what they did was they put in, um, like, flashback of Jen being terrible to each of them. So the episode actually starts off over at Beauty Lab and Laser. It's a grand opening in two days. And, again, I stand by Heather. She's my favorite of the series. She's the breakout star. Um, I love her. I've got, like, 99% of you guys saying the same thing. You feel the same way. She's just been... Fantastic. I hope she has a fantastic season two. I hope they bring her back and it's not one of those that we turn on. <laughs> um, okay, so Heather's panicked because it's not finished and the counters have to be installed, but the party's in two days. Whitney comes to see, oh, there's this whole thing about the stanchions too. She didn't know <laughs> that they were called stanchions. It just kind of made me laugh. Um, Whitney comes to see her and They say that neither of them have talked to Jen since Vegas. Not really a shocker there. Jen was horrible. They don't really want to talk to her. Whitney thinks Heather should have uninvited Jen to the opening. Heather's a really nice person, and I don't think that's her MO to do something like that. So then we see Lisa go to this bar, and Jen meets her there. Jen says she appreciates Lisa because Lisa's the only one that reached out to her after Vegas. Um, So let's talk about this. Jen is so clueless. You know, she, I've said before, I feel like she is just like, okay, what will make me a standout star or or like the ideal housewife? And she thinks it's to throw these crazy tantrums and to act like this maybe, but it's, it's not, it's so much more than that. But um, she seems to have no clue why everybody's pissed at her. It's the weirdest thing. Hello, no self-awareness. It's it's really wild. Lisa says that Whitney said Jen is trying to get info out of people to use against them. Well, we've seen this. That's what Jen does. Every, I mean, she does it on everybody. She makes these little digs. She asks questions. Um, it's all to use against people, again, and trying to be the biggest maybe housewife villain. I'm not sure. So rather than take any accountability whatsoever for being a complete asshole, Jen instead tries to bring her, blame her upbringing and uh, it's just ridiculous. She just doesn't, she's just clueless. I don't know. I I can't figure it out. I think it's a combination of cluelessness and this need to be on TV maybe. I don't, for attention maybe. It seems to be some sort of combination of that. Um, Jen says she's tried to support Heather says that she needs to meet people halfway. Lisa says, you don't have to say everything you think. Then we go to Meredith and Seth, and you guys, I stick by my original opinion. Seth sucks. He gives me the creeps. I know he was teasing, but he was making this little jab about the way she sliced up his banana, and I didn't like it. Um, She says they're in a great place now, excited to move forward, have a happy life together. Okay, cool. I'll be honest with you. I started off really liking Meredith this season, and I don't dislike her per se, but I think Seth and Brooks drag her down, and I I don't know. I just kind of changed my opinion a little bit of her this season, but we'll see. 
Whitney goes over. Okay, so Whitney's with her dad. He has this audition to be an instructor at this hair school. And she says she's grateful that she followed her gut and never gave up on him. I tell you, Whitney is like a saint because we find out more and more about the awful things that dad has done. And Whitney stuck by him and she's the only one. So, um, of course, she's hoping that this sobriety will stick. And um, he's saying if he gets this job, it'll give him the income and the confidence that he needs to continue on. So here's hoping he got the job. So then we're with Heather at Beauty Lab. Tomorrow night is the opening. Um, it's, let's see, Meredith is there. Meredith says that she has compassion and she doesn't think Jen is behaving this way for no reason and that Jen must be suffering. She's not here for that. She says she was toxic and negative and to have a genuine relationship will be difficult. She hurt my family. If I hurt Jen's family, what do you think would happen? And again, in the same breath, I was saying, I don't know about Meredith. I'm thinking, that's very well said. That's a great point. My God, Jen flies off the handle. And if the role had been reversed and Meredith had been the one talking about Jen's marriage, oh my gosh, it would have been World War III. It would have been awful. Heather says she wouldn't want her daughters to be friend with someone like that. Someone, you know, the way Jen's behaving. And again, I think excellent point. That's, I understand exactly how she feels. And honestly, Jen's exhausting. I wouldn't, you can't trust her with the things you say. You can't tell her anything good or bad in your life. She's going to use it against you. And I'm just saying no thank you on Lisa Rinna part two. So then we go over to Lisa and you guys, I just, I don't dislike Lisa as much as I started disliking her at the beginning of the season. Um, I just think she's a kook and maybe that's the making of a good housewife. She is working on Fresh Wolf and I'm sorry, I, that name, it just, I cannot take that seriously, Fresh Wolf. Um, they have four products. Remember, that's the thing that she's working on with her sons. She said that they wanted to create a brand and launch a product, so they're trying to help them. She's excited that she's created many moguls. Uh, she says that she and the husband have sig if invested significant amount of money in this trying to get her older son to pitch products the whole time he's pitching these products she's like i love it you guys i love it i love it that's i mean it's like paris hilton and that's hot it's like when you can't think of something else to say i love it fresh wolf allows them to work together and spend time together those seem to be lisa's favorite things so good luck oh Oh my gosh, you guys, I need to spend time going around Mary's church with her and seeing what the heck's going on here because I feel like we could get a whole episode out of this. She's walking around. We see the picture of her grandma with Jesus. And I am i know I'm not supposed to laugh, but you guys, I busted out laughing when I saw that picture. Um, <laughs> so she's saying... The church is a place where love is, and she's calling herself the first lady, but you can just, I mean, between straight up saying that they suck and the eyes doing their thing where she's saying they suck, she's pretty much telling everybody they suck and, and screaming, you are lost, but now you're found. <laughs> and she's saying her grandmother would have been her cheer, biggest cheerleader. I mean, how are you going to argue with that? <laughs> Like, she could say whatever about her grandmother, and that's the argument the family's making, is that she says all these things that her grandmother wanted for her, and they're claiming that's not what happened. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, terrifying. Would not want to be a member of this choir, nor the congregation. And um, I don't know how I'm fascinated, though. I kind of want them to make a documentary about this church cult, allegedly. Whatever it is. Okay, moving on. So then we go over to Sharif and Jen. And again, I've said, let's get Jen off the show and keep Sharif. I love him. She drives me crazy. <laughs> um, he said she's also or always wanted to go for salsa dancing lessons. So he's taking her. I think he's the cutest. I think he's the sweetest. Everybody says, yeah, he's probably cheating on her. He probably is. But I don't know that I fully blame him. <laughs> but he just seems like such a sweet guy. And so, you know, anyway, I just can't with her. Even her outfit's annoying. Like, the, the outfit when she's dancing annoyed me. I don't know why. It just did. 
Uh, I think it's all just obnoxious and look at me stuff, and, the, and that bugs me. But she calls herself his hot tamale, and Sharif apparently was in a dance troupe in junior high. So they have dinner, and she says she appreciates Coach Shaw, and he's been there through everything, and he sticks with her. She says that she wants to be the best Jen Shaw she can because she can't say anything without saying her last name. He says, I love you. You're my princess forever. Sweet, very touching moment. I don't get her. So it's the night of Heather's event. We get the last sighting of Brooks for the season. Hallelujah on that. Meredith is apparently wearing one of his collaborations. I hate Meredith's outfit. You guys, I haven't even gotten into the mask thing. We will cover that for sure. Uh, so it's just a montage of everybody getting ready. And uh, they're excited for the event. Heather's obviously excited. She's wearing that dress she got in Vegas. I think she looks fantastic. I like the pink ombre. Good for her. Uh, Beauty Lab gives you wings, question mark. That's what I wrote in my note because that's painted huge on the wall. And I thought, isn't that Red Bull's slogan? They have cotton ca candy drinks where they're pouring, it looked like maybe vodka over cotton candy. And I'm not going to, oh no, it wasn't vodka. It was just like champagne. I'm not going to lie. I want to drink that. <laughs> I have like an eight-year-old palate sometimes and seeing the cotton candy I wanted some um so her ex Billy arrives and again I say what's happening here he looks like a Chucky doll come to life I don't understand it I think she could do so much better um and apparently she has because you know they're not together anymore but uh she feels like she's closing the door on the open wound of the divorce she's working so hard she's making this happen you guys, this is where we see Meredith. What is happening here? What is that on her face? Weird music is playing. She's calling it glam and fashion forward. Um, she said it's protection to ward off the nastiness. And it, I, I'm just like, it's not even avant-garde. It's just terrible. All I could think of is if you watch Sex and the City, remember Samantha got that awful face peel. So she had to wear a beekeeper hat to Carrie's event. Uh, so people wouldn't uh, see what she did to her face. Mary even says, "What you know? What's up with that? Is that is it her eye? What's going on there?" And you guys, the funniest part to me is when Whitney says, "This is high fashion. You wouldn't understand with these two masks on her face." I, that just got me. It killed me. Okay, so again, we find out Brooks made the outfit. I hate the outfit. Mary, again, says she thought something was up with Meredith's eye or something. That's why she wore the mask. And I'm thinking if Mary is talking about how stupid you look, then there's a serious problem because Mary looks stupid most of the time. Uh, she's drinking through this mask. It's awful. Okay, let's get into the deep dive I did on Mary. Sorry for the pictures here, but I needed to zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. Did you see the purses? Did you see what's happening there? Yeah. So I did a little research and these are Chanel bags. They're called side packs. And here's the model wearing them. They come in smaller versions or bigger versions. It was very, very hard to tell because they're very similar. I believe she had the larger versions. I might be wrong on that. 6,800 pounds. So let me break that down for you. Pounds to dollars. $9,290. Whoa, it is very expensive to look that stupid. Um, I'm all for Chanel. I would love to have a Chanel bag. I don't need two on my hips emphasizing my hips. No thank you on that. I don't know which is dumber, the mask or the bags. I'm guessing the bags because they cost so much money. Okay, so let's get into this. So it's Meredith talking to Lisa. Meredith ends up taking off her mask. And you guys, I thought some of the jewels got stuck on her eyes. But nope, it's just how she had her eye makeup done. On her eyelid, she had two jewels. I noticed it the whole time. I, it was awful. It looked hard to blink. Okay, so Lisa's saying, I love this. Um, so they talk about Vegas. Meredith is very surprised to hear that J Jen and Lisa have made up. Meredith handles it well. She says it's not something that a friend does, but she understands and um, that she's not, she, basically she was pissed at uh, what Jen for saying who to be friends with, so she's not going to do the same thing to Lisa. So Lisa kind of feels uncomfortable about it. It seems to backpedal a little bit. She's saying, you know, we're not best friends. We'll see how it goes. And um, 
Anyway, okay, so again, Mary's purses. Mary and Whitney are doing these oxygen treatments. Mary asks what she missed, talking about Vegas, because of course she wasn't, um, she didn't want to go because Jen was there. Whitney explains how Jen accepted her apology after the hip hop party, but then came for her in Vegas. Whitney says when Mary's not around, then Whitney is her target, that Jen comes for her each time. And Mary's like, I told you. Uh, then we see Jen arriving and the whole time I kept thinking, bitch, you better not ruin Heather's event. You better not. <laughs> Heather said she's excited that Jen showed up for her and endorsed her business, but that a lot of crap has gone down and she doesn't know if Jen is there to support her or not. And it's a double edged sword with Jen. So Whitney and Jen are talking. Jen says she's passionate and aggressive. I'd say that's the understatement of the world. Whitney says it's, to it's toxic and she's her punching bag. Jen says not everyone understands or appreciate how she communicates. That is just the most BS logic to me. So she's saying, you don't understand how I communicate. They're all saying you're being an ass and you're being abusive. And she's like, no, you just don't get how I communicate. Bitch, that's not... That's not on everybody else. That's on you. Like you're being an asshole and you're saying they don't know. They don't understand you. No, they understand you perfectly well. You're being an asshole. Jenny Cameron says she doesn't know what she's apologizing for. And then says, are cookies over there that I want to go get some. So she's not sorry. She doesn't give a shit. I hope this comes up at the reunion. I'm sure it'll be more fakeness, either apologies or cluelessness and you guys, I have to say, and don't, please don't hate me for this. I have never been a fan of Teresa Judice. And I get a little bit of Teresa Judice, Teresa Judice uh, vibes from her, where it's just total cluelessness. I mean, she says these things and you're like, what's happening inside your head? Um, that's the vibe I get from her. Again, please don't hate me. I get it. She's an OG. Some people love her. I'm just not one of those people. Okay. So Heather is giving this speech, thanking everyone um, for coming and, you know, making this business successful. And it's, she was trying to be an example for her daughter, and she's so proud of herself. And, and rightly so. She's put in so much. Good for her. I think that's incredible. I hope it succeeds. If I live near there, I would totally go. Meredith is talking to somebody about bad energy, and that's when Jen walks up. Jen tells Meredith, getting in someone's marriage is unacceptable, and she apologizes. Now, this is where I did like Meredith, because I thought um, she handled it well. She says it's nobody's business, and she doesn't know if she'll ever be there and be on the same. She doesn't know if things will be the same again. She can be cordial, but she doesn't know. And Jen is truly surprised that Meredith isn't immediately accepting her apology. I, again, Jen's cluelessness. She talked about her marriage. Uh, Meredith says that she hopes she finds space that will work for her, meaning hope Jen gets in a better headspace because Jen seems all kinds of messed up right now. So Heather walks up and says she feels like she and Jen need to talk, so Meredith excuses herself. Um, Heather's asking, what do you think of everything about the big night? And Jen says, I'm proud of you. Heather says, we've been through a lot together, but I'm pissed. And she brings up the whole thing at the hypnotist where Jen raised her hand saying she didn't trust Heather. And she said that was a sledgehammer to her. So Heather had already revealed that she gets very, um, what's the word? Self-conscious. No, that's not the right word. Like, um, she she treasures her friendships and she feels weird when they're not right and so Jen knew that and made sure things weren't right so Heather would feel weird I don't think I'm saying that right but you get what I'm saying um so and have and Heather saying listen I'm always there for you in Vegas you had the opportunity to show up for me and you didn't instead you gave me a big F you with the hand raise and with the shove so Jen says she's sorry it's not I mean, it's just, again, same thing where she's like, I don't know what I'm apologizing for, but I'm sorry. No, that negates your apology. The group says you need to own it, talking about, uh, especially with the Heather stuff. Jen says, I don't know what I'm owning. Again, Teresa Judice. Um, to camera, Jen brings up the shopping event where she arranged private shopping for Heather. 
And she thinks that means she's gone above and beyond for her. No, she's asking you to be there for a friend, not to buy things with her. Jen says, I don't understand or know what I'm owning. Lisa says, just make up for the night and move on. Heather is saying, listen, you still have to own this. You haven't been a good friend to me. And so Jen kind of half ass says, no, I haven't been a good friend. And Heather says, do you, we be a good friend moving forward? And Jen just says, yes. I think Heather's so ready to move on. She just says, okay. And they hug. Heather then talks about being a good Mormon and flashes to them all being silly and dancing on poles and everything else they've done this season. And then we see the end cards. So I've got them. I'm not going to read them because honestly, not too much. I don't think there is anything shocking on the end cards. I mean, it's interesting to find out Whitney's doing a skincare line. Uh, supposedly Mother, uh, Mother, Mary has been like going through her stuff, but I'm saying bullshit. She, she's a hoarder. I mean, I'm sure she caught a lot of crap this season, but she's clearly a hoarder. So I don't think anything's changed. Um, we do see a flash to the reunion. It's going to be a three-parter. Apparently, Mary takes a book, a page out of Ramona's book and falls asleep during the reunion. Whitney doesn't know how her dad is. That breaks my heart. I hope it's just like editing thing where they're saying that, but she, I don't know. I hope he's not falling off the, the wagon. Um, we see Mary and her grandpa slash husband FaceTiming. Lots of people getting pissy and standing up and walking off. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm here for the reunion. I can't wait for it. I want to see all of it. I want to see if Jen and Mary act like people or <laughs> continue to act like, like clueless assholes. I'm not sure. So we'll see what goes down there. But I am here for it. You guys, that is it for the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have a fantastic week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Leave me your thoughts down below. Um, are you excited for the reunions? Let me know. And I will be talking to you guys again soon. Take care. Stay healthy. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.